Okay, good morning, everybody. Hope all of you all are doing well. Um, and uh, welcome to all the e-learning students as well. Uh, thank you for <coughs> joining in all those who are online. Hope everybody's okay. All right, I think we'll get started. Let's just start with a word of prayer and hope there are a few more who will come in. Let's just start praying. Heavenly Father, we come to you, Lord, in Jesus' name. Pray, God, for your grace over us. Thank you, Lord, that um, you work within us. Lord, even as we move into today's class to learn other skills, we pray that you will give us every wisdom and every knowledge that we need <clears throat> to look into the way that we can help and work with people. We pray, God, that, uh, that we will rely on you even when we need to ask some difficult questions, Lord, that you will help it, help us keep it fruitful, Lord, for you. Thank you, God, for with each one of us, Lord. We pray that you will encourage us in body, uh, our soul, and in spirit. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right. Okay. So... Um, just let's have a quick recap about what we did last week. Would anyone like to quickly go back and look at what we spoke about last week? What is the skill that we learned last week? Anybody? Or maybe one of the two two skills that we've already learned last week last week and the week before that. Okay, I'll start maybe and then see if you can remember, refresh your memory. We started off with the tending skills. That was not last week, last to last week. We had a look at how we can attend how we um, attend verbally, how we attend non-verbally, as well as using our body language. Uh, that, that's what we had spoken of in the previous class. What about last week? Anybody? Uh, responding skills. Yeah, okay. We had, we had done responding skills where we spoke about how we can respond to feeling, we can respond to content, can respond to meaning, right? And doing that both together, uh, we 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 spoken even about summative reflecting. Okay, so today we're going to uh, look at a very uh, uh, important um, uh, uh, skill in counselling, which is what we call as questioning. Okay, uh, just give me a minute. I just put up the screen. Sorry, just give me a minute. Okay, so we're going to look at uh, another very important skill, which is questioning. Now, the skills in questioning may seem actually pretty simple, right? I mean, the, the, you may be wondering as to what is what what is the big effect of a questioning uh, to, to develop a skill in good questions. But your questioning and counseling is what can really change the, the entire counseling process or the counseling series. Because the kind of questions that you ask, it's not just to gather information, but it's also to be able to help them reflect, to help them to think, to help them to problem solve, to help them to make decisions, so to, to even help them to make choices. So the way that you bring in questions is just not information gathering. Like sometimes when you meet a new person, you may ask a few questions, you know, what's your name? Where do you stay? How old are you? Yes, that's information gathering. 
but when you when you ask uh, questions about more deeper ones like what do you think about such and such thing if this was this way how do you think you would approach it now all of that brings about a lot more depth in the conversation or depth in what uh, a person may be maybe going through or experiencing right so questioning in itself is uh, is a extremely important skill when we're looking at at counseling so let's just look at what uh, some of oh sorry some of the details of, uh, of what is the purpose what do we see as the purpose of counseling skills now when you look um, at a purpose the the basic purpose is to one it guides the counseling conversation uh, it is through your questioning that you may you may find a lot more uh, answers so what you're doing is you're you're adding uh, a lot more uh, enrichment to your counseling story so when you effectively question you're you're bringing about the um Uh, yes, Lubega is. Uh, I think you've raised your hand. Mom, I had a question. I don't know if it, this is the right time to ask. Yes. Uh, when you were doing the, the other assignment, okay. There is uh. one. There is one question that had the confidentiality, consent, and another thing. Okay. Is it is it true that it had no correct answer? No, it would have had a correct answer. Probably it was not. It didn't take the correct answer. I will be looking at all of your uh, your papers manually. Okay, so it's just not a. It's not just not going to be generated by the app. But I will be looking at it manually. So don't worry. Even if you have not got a correct answer, or if it shows wrong, and when you think it's correct, I am going to be looking at each of them manually. Okay. Thank you, ma'am. Okay. All right. Yes. Yes. Uh, Toby Loba. I think you've raised your hand. Hello. Hello, ma'am. Yes. Hello. Concerning the assignment, ma'am. Ma okay. We have some questions that you ask us to pick more than more than one options, but I'm yes. I'm unable to pick more than one options. So, and it affects my mark. So I'm unable to pick more than one options in the, on the questions when I'm attending the test. Uh, is that, the, uh, oh, okay, is that, uh, is everyone else facing that? Because I, uh, there was one question there was there. Right? Yes, ma'am. There was Same one question, me. is it? Same with you? Okay, yeah. don't worry, I'll review that, okay? So sometimes some of the settings, you know, once you set it, if you're doing so many and it doesn't get saved, then the settings. So I will look into that, and if there is a discrepancy like that, you will get the marks that is that is given, okay? So no worries on that. I, I'm yet to look Thanks at it. I, was, I wasn't keeping well last yeah. week, but I will look at it the following week. Thank okay. you. All right, okay. Um, yeah, I think that's no more. Okay. Uh, yeah, so we were looking at uh, questioning, and um, we, we were just uh, um, looking at why questioning is necessary. What I'd like to do is, um, I'd like any two volunteers from your group, anyone one over here, one person acts as the questioner, and the other uh, uh, is role-playing, just answering. Okay, because I'd like, and, and you don't have to bring about anything private. We're not doing a counseling session. Let's support, let's say you're going to, you want to understand about what happened in, um, in the day, in, in a day, like yesterday, what happened yesterday or today for those of you who are still going through, maybe you are in the night of the yesterday for us in India. Um, just to understand how the day was, okay? So I'd like two volunteers, one person who can just question and find out about how, uh, uh, you know, your partner's day went. It's just to bring about certain understanding of sometimes how we bring about questions 
and how we can actually enrich our questioning. Okay. So any two volunteers, any volunteer, someone who will question and someone who will answer. Okay. Jeffina is one. Who's the other volunteer? I need one more volunteer. One more volunteer, please. Rosalind, would you like to be the other volunteer? Someone raise a hand. Rosalind, okay, Rosalind. Yeah, so I'm Rosalind. Sorry, ma'am. Okay, good. All right. So, um, which of you would like to be the questioner? Let Jeffina do the question. <laughs> okay, so Jeffina, okay, we, we will switch it. We'll switch it. I have Jeffina sitting right in front of me. Okay, so Jeffina is going to question, and Rosalind, you're going to be giving the answer. So, Jeffina, what you need to do is just uh, find out about how Rosalind's day was. Okay, find out certain details about what her day was. So, it's a very open, uh, open uh, event. Uh, it's up to you how you'd like to take that. Yeah, go ahead. Like, ma'am, um, are we friends or like? Uh, you're like, like classmates. Like, you're like classmates. Classmates. <laughs> okay, ma'am. Okay. All right. Yeah. Okay. Hi, Rosalyn. Hey, hi, Jessica. Hi, how are you doing? Um, not so good. Oh, not so good. What's the reason? Yeah, I had um, like a bad day yesterday. Oh, your yesterday was bad. Sorry to hear that. That's okay. Is there, yeah, is there anything that you would like to share with me? Hmm. It's my sister's problem. Like, like she has, she's facing a very um, a teenage problem at home. Not exactly teenage, but then yes, some her, some issues with her daughter. Okay, okay, That's, I understand. It must be very hard. Uh, how is your sister doing now? Hmm. Like I said, not good. Okay, still not good. Okay. Mm -hmm. What else? And how is everything? <laughs> I don't know how else to go forward, actually. <laughs> um, yeah, good you called me. Actually, I did want to share it with someone, but like I was clueless, like whom to approach. Um, I was also thinking about, your, you know, to to take counseling on this matter with someone like whom I can trust. Yeah, yeah. That's that's a very good thought. Uh, I, even I'm so happy that I can be here for you. Uh, if you would like to share anything, I'm always there to listen. Um, uh, it's like, uh, you know, um, my, the, with my niece, she wants to move out of the house. OK. Yeah, so it's quite serious. So I don't know how to handle this now, like as family. Okay, I understand. We are very happy with her decision. Can we please end this? <laughs> I'm out of questions. <laughs> oh, the answering part is so good. <laughs> okay, that is that's a good job, Jafita. Good job. Uh, thanks, Rosalind. Okay, Thank would, would Rosalind, would you like to be the the person who questions and maybe success you can answer? It's it's the same thing, just to ask about your day. Okay. Okay. Success. You're the you're the one who's going to be giving uh, Rosalind uh, answers to her questions. Okay. All right, ma'am. Let's try. Go ahead. Go ahead, Rosalind. 
Hi, success. How are you? I'm fine, boss. Good morning. Very good morning. So, how was your day? Oh, my day was so hectic yesterday. I beg your pardon? My, my day was so hectic. I mixed my flight and um, I wasn't happy about it because I had to pay extra charges, which is, I find, difficult. Oh, how to pay? Like, what went wrong? Were you like sleeping extra, or like what? Um, traffic. The traffic was so I didn't let off early, so the traffic was so so much, so I couldn't meet up. Oh yeah, traffic something which is like beyond our control. But you could have left an hour. Before, yes, like... yes. I, I actually, I tried all my best, but uh, worked so much on me. Uh, the whole thing was so, so much. So I was so confused at point. But uh, yeah, it happened. So success. Different. Never mind. Glad you reached. Yes, I thank God. But it wasn't funny because I got to the next destination about twelve p.m. twelve a.m. rather. Uh -oh. So I was sleeping at the airport. Mm, so you must be quite tired then. So, so tired. So tired. So I wasn't happy at all because I wouldn't be able to meet up my apartment this morning. Because we are I'm still going for an hour journey before getting to my destination. I'm so I'm so sad. I don't know. Why. I'm so I'm, I'm I'm happy. The whole thing just made me tired. You're sad at the same time. You're happy. Is that what you're saying? I'm, so, I'm okay. unhappy. I'm unhappy. I'm unhappy. Okay. 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 Anyway, just forget what happened and uh, don't ruin the the day for it. You know forget what happened and start fresh thank you so much i'm so glad for the fresh in the morning. thank you so much i think your you word is you have a good success <laughs> thank you thank you Rosalind. Thank you. Thank you. that was nice okay so let me Thanks ask so ask the two people who were uh, uh, who were on the other side of the questions that's Rosalind and success when you all were asked questions, um, how how much were you all able to share? What were you all, uh, how much did the questions help you share? Rosalind, success. How much did the questions that were asked to you help you share or not share? Um, if it's a friend. Um... No, like Jafina's Jafina's questions. Uh, I'm, we're just looking at that scenario. Yeah, Jafina's questions. questions. Yeah. So, how much were you able to share with the questions she asked? Yeah, of course, I was able to share like almost what I mm -hmm. wanted to share, and um, mm -hmm. yeah, it helped. Okay. Yeah. All right. What about you, right, success? Yeah. yeah um, come give a question, please. Uh, what? How much were you able to share with the questions that were asked to you? Uh, almost all the questions, sir. Mama. Almost, almost all, all the questions. questions. Okay. All right. Okay. So, so thank you. I think that that was a that was a good. I know I put you all in the spot, but nevertheless, just to help you all, um, you know, I think of both points of time, both of you all did really well, Jeffine and Rosalind, as you all started the conversation. Uh, after some time, you all must have noticed that you all got stuck. You all didn't know what else to ask, okay, or how else to proceed. <clears throat> now, uh, that often can happen even when we're counseling, and um, that's not mainly a reflection on your uh, on your counselee that they're not able to proceed. It may be a reflection on us as a counselor 
because we may not be asking and directing the right kind of questions for them to share or to bring up a certain understanding or a reflection. Okay, And that's why the, the skill is extremely important to know how do we use it in a, in a form, uh, in a way that, that can completely help the counselee, not just give you information, but give you something a lot more deeper than, than information. Okay, um, so let's move on. So the, the point of, the, uh, of, of these skills, when is, is this used or when do we um, uh, ensure that we, we uh, employ these skills? So it's not just important in the information gathering, it's useful there because you, are, you get a lot of data but it is it's something that you can even use throughout the entire counseling process and there are certain counseling approaches okay like even as we're looking at uh, um, the model remember we looked at an abcde model before we started that's one of the basic models that are there similarly there are different models or different approaches there is an approach called as the solution focused therapy that just focuses on the counselor make, giving questions. It does, it, and of course, there is a reflection of feeling. All the skills are used, but there isn't too much of suggestions or, or um, brainstorming. Any of that is not given. The entire process of counseling takes place just by questions so the questions are so deep the questions are so vast the questions are so intricate and well thought of that just by the questions the counselee is able to bring about ideas and thoughts and how they can change their situation that's a very interesting approach and it takes a lot of work for a counsellor to be able to listen carefully and ask the right questions so that the, the, the uh, counselee can come to a place of resolution of their situation, okay? So if you are interested, there is a lot of reading about solution-focused, where a lot of the things come by just questions. Like, for example, one of the biggest questions that, that they ask in uh, while beginning a counselling session is, um, what are, what, what do you see as the best outcome for our conversation today. That, that's how generally they begin it. And so the counselee actually is thinking, okay, it, it, and, and I haven't asked a direct question. Actually, that question really means, what do you want from this counselling session? Okay. Um, and But then in the way that it is asked, it helps them see, it makes it more personalised for them. It says, okay, through this, I want to know how to, cope with this kind of an issue or I want to become stronger and so so just by that question you get to understand the basic um, uh, goal of what a person is looking at when they come in for a counseling session so uh, so the so these questions are very very important and it's a skill it's just like I said it's just not information gathering but it is to help you through the entire process of of counseling okay so what do you think what 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 does counseling do when when you're looking at counseling it the first and foremost thing it does is it assists to um, clarify information that may seem ambiguous to the counselor so questions during the counseling session um, helps to open up new areas of discussion so they can assist to pinpoint at a certain issue. Uh, they can assist to clarify information that may be ambiguous. Questions also invite the counsellee to think or recall information that can help in the counsellee's journey of self-exploration. Okay, so it can do many things. One, it opens new areas of discussion. The second, it pinpoints an issue that can help you to clarify something that may not be very clear to the counselor to the counselor and it also helps the counselee to think 
or recall information that can help them in their journey of self-exploration. Like, for example, when you ask a question like, um, what do you think about your upbringing? Right, you're asking them about their upbringing, maybe how their parents and what kind of relationship that they shared. So as they are sharing that information, you will see that the, the counselee themselves are exploring something about that situation or that, uh, that phase that may give them some clues or some ideas about what is going on in their lives right now. Okay, so uh, as a counsellor, it is important to uh, to come about all of this. So some of the examples that we can look at is, um, uh, there are some examples of how you could do this is, um, like, for example, when you want to clarify information, you can say, I'm sorry, I didn't understand. Would you please repeat that? Okay. Or here, what do you think about what I just said? Or what do you think about, like I said, you know, what do you, what, how do you, uh, how do you sense that your upbringing was? Or would you give me an example of what you meant by, um, by conflicts in the home, right? Or bickerings in the home. So, so some of the words or some of the phrases that your counsel counselee uses can be taken about in order to to have a better understanding about the, the, the situation that they are doing. So, so this is one thing that questioning does. <coughs> Excuse me. It also aids in self-exploration. And if, if you remember the, the first and foremost thing that we look at when we are uh, um, looking at a counseling process is exploration. Right? So it, it helps to understand a lot more about your counselee's life. So here are some, some questions that are there. Uh, just give me a moment, please. Yeah, Some questions that you can think about is, what further thoughts do you have about this person your parents want you to marry? So it, it, it's... It's actually going deeper into <coughs> it's going deeper into what the person thinks um, about maybe um, you know marriage or about wh whatever the situation is, right? It's not just what they have told you, but a lot into what um, they may be thinking about. Uh, the next question that that can often be asked. Okay, I just I need I need to just get something to clear my throat. Give me a second. Okay, I'm so sorry. Okay, so um, some other questions that um, another another example of a question uh, is maybe this this uh, counselee has spoken about how uh, the father makes the counselee feel important. So it's you. I mean, so there's there, uh, and this is there's a little bit of clarification and understanding about what the counselee said. So he said, you mentioned that your father always made you feel important. What did you mean? <laughs> okay. Or what are you feeling as we are talking about this? So it's a lot more deeper than what's been actually asked. So the counselee gets to explore a lot more within about what they may be feeling or what their thoughts are, or what, what may be within that they have not been able to express otherwise, okay? 
It also encourages the client to talk. It's an invitation <coughs> for the client to talk about maybe a certain situation. All right. Like the example given here is you said something about your sister a little while ago. Are you interested in telling me about her now? So, you know, the example of Jafina and uh, Rosalind, she was talking about her niece. Um, and it was, it's actually an invitation to ask her to talk about it because uh, Rosalind seemed to be quite forthcoming with the uh, information that there was something wrong with her niece and to maybe just add a question as um, it seems to have bothered you so much. Would you like to talk about it? Would you like to share it? Thank you. Thanks so much. Excuse me. So it's just to ask her if she would be interested in talking about now. So even when somebody is stuck, and you are getting the idea that someone wants to talk, someone wants to share something. And I think Jafina said that. She said, do you like, I'm here to listen to you if you'd like to share about it now. So you know, it encourages them to bring about that kind of a conversation. OK? Or it helps to open new areas of discussion. So maybe your counselee is talking about some um, some some situation at some area, and you want to explore something else in another in in a new area. So it's like this: you're very disappointed at the way you're treated at office. How do you feel at home? So what are you trying to do here? Is to see whether the relationships that they have at the office and at home are different, or how they how they experience these these different. Um, relationships so that's that's what you, you're also doing so when you open up new areas it, it opens up new new spheres or new areas of discussion okay now <clears throat> I, i'd like to take some time just to help us see that productive questions are um is is a positive form of counseling what do productive questions do it creates and produces interactions that have real abundant payoffs. You know, there's a, there's a huge um, <clears throat> uh, benefit for the counselee as well as the counsellor as against unproductive questioning. Now, unproductive questioning is something that we will we will we will look at later. But unproductive questioning it gives you information. Um, may, they give you some information, but it, it gives you very limited <clears throat> responses. Okay, So here are some types of productive questioning. So the productive, one of the types of productive questioning is when a questioning energizes a thought. Um, many times people think something about a situation. Like, for example, I may tell you a fact. I may say, um, my marriage in the last 10 years um, has been very plain. My husband and I don't talk too much. Um, we, we, uh, you know, we, just, uh, we just talk about the important things of the functional things, how to buy grocery, where to send the kids. So that's an information I'm giving you. <clears throat> But an energizing thought helps you to, um, when you give a, a question like that, it helps the counselee to really have a, uh, an understanding of what they think. So maybe a question like, um, what, what have you seen has happened to your marriage in the last 10 years? No, they, <coughs> they have not given you. Uh, they've given you only some data, but what you're hoping to get from them is their understanding of the situation. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
right? So um, what you're doing is to help them. Um, you're helping them to make a connection between the data they've given you as well as the thoughts that they're thinking about it, okay? So if you look at the other questions, there is what is happening in your mind right now, or what are you thinking about right now, or uh, how, how do you explain somebody's behavior? You are getting a lot of understanding about how they are processing that information, okay? The next is productive questioning helps to get them to express feelings. Ma'am, you're on mute. Have I been on mute for a long time? No, no, just uh, two, maybe two, three seconds. Yeah. Okay, <laughs> sorry, okay. Yeah. Uh, so when they are talking about the data, um, you are uh, you, you would like them like to understand where they what they are feeling. So that's where you ask these questions of what makes you feel this way, how do you feel about this, um, what do you sense is happening between you and your husband right now. Um, how long have you been feeling like this? So productive questions adds in more. It gives you a lot more of um, understanding about what's going on within, what's going on internally in the person's mind. Okay, so that's ex energ it, it's an energizing thought, and it also helps express feeling. The third one, it helps to link certain comments. Uh, we'll just look at the example here, and uh, I'll, I'll, I'll explain that a little bit more. Here, uh, let's say the client says, my mother constantly calls me dumb. I guess maybe, okay, I'd like you to just read that while I just have a quick cough. So let's just read it together. Uh, client says, my mother constantly calls me dumb. I guess maybe I don't work hard enough, but the work is too hard for me. Counselor, I hear something in what you are saying. I wonder if you seem to agree with your mother. OK, thank you so much, Afina. So what, what is happening here is uh, the client feels that um, um, from what her mother has called her, her mother has labeled her something, and she, you know, she's she's struggling with some work, right? And the fact that the counselee has bought these two statements together, the counsellor is making an assumption of the two statements and bringing about uh, linking certain comments and bringing about the question. Okay, so she's saying, I wonder if you seem to agree with your mother, because that's what she uh, she's attempting to, to say. And that's exactly what the counselor is bringing up. So sometimes that's what you can do when your counselor is saying something <clears throat> and giving you two different information or two different understanding or uh, has said a certain uh, information and given you a thought process or giving you a feeling, you know, you can like, like for example, um, the the earlier example I gave you, right? I, I'm, I've given you information about how my marriage is, and maybe your next question is, how do you feel about it? And I may say, you know, I feel um, I feel very disappointed. I feel um, there's nothing left in this. Okay, so you can. There are certain things that you begin to link. So you can say you feel hopeless because because that doesn't seem to be any progress in your marriage <coughs> and i wonder if you believe that uh, very deeply within you know so when you're doing that what you're doing is you've made an assumption and you've asked a question to help to see 
how they process that understanding that you have got. Okay, so, so productive question helps to link different kinds of comments in the counseling, in the counselee's remarks. Okay. Next. Sorry, ma'am, you're on mute again. Okay, I'm sorry, I think it's a, it's a yeah. Okay. So redirecting is where you uh, you are helping to refocus, um, redirect on a focus maybe your counselee is making, <clears throat> like um, um, your counsellor counselee is talking about now in this case, she's maybe talking about the focus is a lot about maybe a child, okay. Um, maybe the counselee has told you that my marriage between me and my husband over the last 10 years have not been very fruitful and then quickly goes on to tell you that, uh, you know, mm -hmm. my son is not, um, you know, is, is bringing up a lot of issues, right? It's bringing up, he's bringing up she's bringing up something about the family marriage, she's bringing something about the son, she's probably bringing up about other things. But what, what you are seeing is that the, you need to have focus on maybe one issue at a time. So that's what a productive questioning can do. Is it possible you focus on your son more to avoid what is happening between you and your husband? So when you're actually bringing about a question, it gets them to think to see whether they are actually uh, that there's a lot of focus on one area of their lives when actually it should be on the other area. <clears throat> so you're you're helping to redirect the 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 session also towards maybe a core problem that needs to be discussed a lot more uh, rather than having the counselee discuss something that may not be of some importance. So that's what productive questioning does to help to bring a lot of things in place so that you can really explore and get your counselee to understand, okay? Mm. Next, we, we'll, we'll also look into what are some of those unproductive questioning. And if we're looking into unproductive questioning, a lot of these questions in unproductive, um, uh, the unproductive tie is actually quite unnecessary, okay? And if you look at these examples, the first one is, when you're picking on the client or you're picking on the counselee, it's saying, you know, what's the matter with that? Or why do you always say that? Why don't you ever listen to what I say? Is when you're actually picking on the person and that doesn't help in the counselling session at all. When you, uh, in other words, when you're getting annoyed with them and you are bringing up questions uh, that, uh, that, that, you know, maybe very judgmental about them, or any kind of questions that helps, that makes them see that they aren't in the right place or they aren't thinking properly, all of that becomes to be unproductive questioning. The second kind of unproductive questioning is what we call is a wool gatherer. That is, you know, you are asking questions that do not pertain to the issue, but have, <clears throat> but you're trying to find all details outside of it like this you know do you have to share a room with your brother do you have a tv do you have a fridge all of this is not important to the to the uh, you know to the to the session in itself like how do you travel from here to there how many buses do you have to take those are not necessary for your uh, for your sessions or do you think that the session is supportive for you even there it's it's actually trying to pick up a lot of you know, you're, you're gathering things that are really not necessary for your for uh, for for the for the counselling. Okay, <clears throat> so let's just look at some characteristics of good questioning, and after that, we will uh, you know we look at uh, um, uh, uh, types of questions, maybe certain examples of questions, and find out what are the best kind of uses. Uh, best uh, questions that can be used in a counseling session, okay? Um, often it may seem that a counseling session consists of bombarding the client with questions. <clears throat> but the, counts the counselor who is judicious about the way they use questions 
can really actually attain a lot of things. Okay, so first and foremost, uh, um, questions should be used as instruments to open channels of communication. <coughs> And it is not just only to interrogate, that is to find out or to, to be curious. It's actually to, to connect. It should be in a way to build a rapport. And your question should not seem very technical or it should not seem very uh, mechanical without having any sense of an information or or any sense of a heart to it. Like I'm sure some of us would have experienced this when you go to a doctor, a doctor who just doesn't have time. So you know, the, the, you can you can make out the difference between a warm doctor or a cold a person who's warm or a person who's cold. So a person who's cold will say yes. What what do you want? Okay, four symptoms. Uh, this is this. This is this. This is that. That's it, right? But let's say a person who's a warmer person say, "What's your name? How did you come here? Um, you know, did you have your breakfast today?" Right? Maybe these kind of questions seem very, very um, simple, but nevertheless they connect, right? Okay, what brought you here today? How can I help you? Um, uh, what What would you like me to do for you? So all of these actually builds it. It it opens up that channel of communication. Okay. It's important to, when you're asking questions, to intersperse it with listening. So it's just not waiting for the specific answer to your question, but being willing to listen to more than what they have to say. Okay, And that's where a lot of times even your silence comes in, like <coughs> When your counselee is answering something, and uh, like like maybe you are asking, "How was your day?" Uh, my day was good. And if you could actually wait for some silence, uh, you know, wait with some silence, you may get a little bit more of things. Yeah, except for uh, the morning where I had some such, such and such thing. So it is important to in use those atten attention, attentive skills that we learned, even with your questions, because when you intersperse it with that, you're actually helping a lot more for the counselee to, to share with you. Okay. Uh, then questions should follow on from a previous response and must encourage them to build upon their last response. So when you're saying, Mm. How's everybody at home? So I may say, yeah, my dad and my mom, they're okay, but yesterday my dog was not well. Okay. How's office? Okay. My office is okay. I got fired yesterday. Oh, all right. I'm sorry about that. Mm. How's church? You know, so you know what's happening here? <clears throat> it should, you should be able to build upon a response that's been there uh, earlier right? because it helps to complete a certain uh, issue that you that you're trying to get to understand from your counseling okay like um now, now, maybe this is a little bit more deeper you're asking your your counselee, how did you feel about your child talking to you like that yesterday um i felt um I felt extremely upset about it. Okay, now my next question could be: um, I could ask, um, uh, "What did your husband say about it?" You've kept to the topic, but your counselee has given you a big clue that she's been upset with what happened with her and her son. So, the point is to encourage them to build upon their last response. So, if I were to say, I was extremely upset with what my son did yesterday. So, and that's why you use a reflective feeling. So, yeah, I can, I can imagine that must have been really hard on you. What were you thinking at that time when you felt like that? You know, so I've actually built in a little bit more deeper <clears throat> into getting to understand the thoughts of 
um, my counselling. So, so she may say something like, mm, um, I was just wondering whether my son really loves me or not, or whether, you know, what's happened to these kids these days? Why do they, mm, mm, why is there so much of disrespect? So, you know, you're getting ideas, you're getting attitudes, you're getting deeper thoughts into what's happened. So, so a question should encourage them to build upon something. So if you sense, remember, the way that you can understand that is if you feel uncomfortable. If you're beginning to feel uncomfortable about what to say next, okay, that's when you sometimes jump from one to another, from one response into another. So be careful to encourage them to build upon the earlier question, okay? And lastly, at the end of questioning, to clarify a problem situation, you use it to clarify a problem situation. You clarify generally by summarizing something. So that's what you could do at the end of your questioning. You know, you're saying, okay, so what I heard you saying is this, this, that. Is that right? You know, is this, is this how you wanted me to see this? So that's again a use of question that you can you can have that. Okay, uh, <clears throat> let's take a break of uh, ten minutes, and we will we will come back. It's 10.51 on my clock. We will uh, come back by 10 minutes, 11.50. Um, sorry, 11.01. <laughs> 